The Robert G. Dicus Award is the most prestigious award presented by our section to a deserving member. The Dicus Award recognizes a single member of PPS whose contributions have, as a whole have been except, of exceptional value. As the first president of the PPS from 1957 to 1959, Robert G. Dicus set the standard for volunteer leadership in the section. Previous winners' names of this prestigious award are appearing on the screen. Would those individuals in attendance today please stand and be recognized? Okay, this one will be the tough one for me tonight. So, when you're president of PPS, you get to come up here and stand up here and not, try not to screw anything up too bad um, while you talk about this. And, uh, you know, some people might consider that a good thing or a bad thing, but there are, there are some really cool things you get to do. And this is one of them, um, is give away awards. Um, so, one of the greatest privileges that I could possibly have is to introduce this next award winner. Um, for this one, if um, he's a close and personal friend, and uh, truly is probably one of the kindest human beings that I know. <clears throat> Being faced with a privilege, I started to think about what I might say about David. So I decided to come up with a single word that best described David. One, an easy task. And some of them I probably won't mention that, that I came up through here. But the single word that just kept coming back to me was the word love. So you see, David is a man of love. And he exemplifies it in everything that he does. So, excuse me if I get a little emotional here, but that's the way it goes. So, first, David loves God, and he, everything that he does is driven by that. David loves his family, his wife Cindy, his children Josh and Callie, and his grandchildren. David loves the profession of physical therapy, and he has spent his entire career in service, not only to his patients, but to his colleagues, his students, and to APTA. David loves the private practice section and he has been a servant leader in PPS in committees, task forces, and on the board of directors. David loves his friends and he's always there for them when they need a kind word or a compassionate reprimand. <laughs> so to quote Thomas Keating, love is his first, middle, and last name. It's not sentimentality, but love that is self-forgetful and, and free of self-interest. So it is with great joy that I present the 2016 Dicus Award winner, a man who I love, David Papa Qualls. Thank you very much, Terry. I, I'm not so sure we just could, could leave right now after all that, because I, I don't know that I, I know that individual that, that you were talking about. Um, it is an honor to stand before you, knowing those who have received this award before me. Fortunately, I knew or still know most of the previous recipients. That elevates this honor even more. However, if you thought that the Colonel was going to be here today, I'm sorry to disappoint you. And I will also tell you ahead of time that you're not going to hear any quotes from Lincoln or Churchill. 
but you may hear from Boudreaux and Thibodeau before we're done. I do appreciate your confidence as you allow me to compete with this little small debate that is happening across town. But we will be more positive here than they are there. I... <clears throat> Seriously, today, uh, today I'm humble and have been since Terry phoned in July to let me know that I have been chosen to receive the Dicus Award. Many of you are deserving of this honor also and could very easily be standing here today. I offer my thanks to the awards committee for their recommendation, to the PPS Board of Directors for their acclamation, and for those who took time to write letters of recommendation on my behalf. I must thank George McCluskey who motivated me 42 years ago during my time in Columbus, Georgia as a student. And I also need to thank Betty Wolf, who was willing to offer me my first practice position and who for five years put up with this young therapist who thought that he was gonna cure everyone. And I'm also honored to walk in the footsteps of Francis Guglielmo, a Louisiana private practice icon who was a Dicus recipient in 1988. This award would not be possible without the tremendous support of my family. My son Josh is not here today. He had scheduled a spiritual retreat and because of that and some unexpected child responsibilities, I definitely thought it was more important for him to honor that than to be here. My daughter Callie is here though. Many times over the past years when asked, where's your dad? Her comment was always at a meeting somewhere my love to you both. And this would definitely not be possible without Cindy. Cindy has kept things going at the home all these years. Our faith and giving spirit is because of her. After Cindy and I married, when asked if she worked outside the home, her answer was always, yes, I'm a PV. So the next question was always, what's a PV? A professional volunteer, she would reply. Cindy is the person who picks up teenage hobos, finds them food at the church, drives them to the laundromat to wash their clothes, and then on to a hotel where she secures a room for them so at least they can have one clean, dry night. She is also the person who gives her coat to a stranger while ringing the bell for the Salvation Army at Christmas and usually carries McDonald's meal deal coupons in the car that she gives out to homeless at the red lights. So you wonder why I volunteer? I blame it all on Cindy. Thank you. However, my early volunteer activities were challenged. I had served in appointed positions in LPTA and finally decided to run for vice president. I ran against this young professor from LSU and got my butt kicked. But I'm pleased to tell you that that young professor is now our APTA president, Sharon Dunn, and I don't feel bad at all. Thank you very much, Sharon. When Terry called to let me know I'd been chosen as a DICUS recipient, our conversation was pretty normal. We visited about PPS, we visited about practice and family and summer activities. Then he said, now I want to get to the real reason why I called. When he told me I'd been chosen as a DICUS recipient, naturally I was shocked. Not me, I think I said, and evidently you have called the wrong person. We did visit a while longer, but I really don't have any idea what else was said other than, you know you have to give an acceptance speech. Uh, and it is our 60th anniversary. <laughs> After our conversation ended, I just sat there in disbelief. Not me, and surely not me on the 60th anniversary of PPS. It did not take me long before I was reintroduced to reality, though. I looked down at the note on my the note that was on my desk that read, change the commode flapper before you leave today. <laughs> I was back to reality, but all of a sudden I was scared to death. So here we are at the PPS 60th anniversary. What an awesome time for this section. I think that Bob Dykus and James McKillop would be pleased with our progress. I know Charles Magistro was. They would be pleased but not satisfied. 
Bob worked so hard for the development of this section and continued his dedication to service even after his diagnosis of ALS and on until his death. He definitely practiced what he preached. And James McKillop's dedication and work on reimbursement, wow. Reimbursement is still in the prime light 60 years later. And how about Charles Magestro? There's not enough time to talk about him. He took the section to another level and not only served PPS, but served APTA as president and founder of the Foundation for Physical Therapy. And with all his success, he never forgot about the little guy. Because of the work and dedication of these three early private practitioners, our section became more ex accepted and respected. Even with their dedication to PPS, they always encouraged the continued commitment to APTA. Service and servitude were what they preached. I love one of the comments Eugene Michaels made in the history of section meetings. He said, when you come here, referring to PPS meetings, leave your degrees and pedigrees at the door. After reading about our founders, it is hard for me to believe we went through a period of time when students were discouraged to enter private practice. The bar was raised by these individuals. Service was what it was all about. Yes, they were able to be financially successful, but for what? Not for the sacrifice of their patient's care, but to give back to the profession and drive its progress. And why did they do this? Because what they did and what we do is ministry. We are called to this profession. Listen to your colleagues' stories. How many knew from the beginning that physical therapy was for them? They were called. How many chose this profession as a second career? And I said career, not a job. And how many have tried to leave this profession but came back? Why? Because it is a calling and what we do is ministry. Why did Louise Yurko work all those years for hospital privileges? And why did Peter McMiniman keep his constant march against pumps and advocate for PT ownership? It's a call. It's ministry. To our colleagues in South Carolina, we are sorry to hear about the Supreme Court decision, but please know that your efforts will continue to reap benefits, even without the decision you wished. We have all benefited from your efforts, and it might not be over yet. And how about Larry Bent's ministry in Haiti? Our calling to this profession was again brought to life. Larry states that we provide what patients need. We listen first and act second. And in turn, people provide the gift to us. In Haiti, patients state, physical therapy makes me happy. I'm sure they could use some happiness right now. Please pray for them. In the New Testament of the Holy Bible, in the book of Romans, chapter 12, starting with verse 3, we read, And because of God's gracious gift to me, I say to every one of you, Do not think of yourself more highly than you should. Instead, be modest in, would be modest in your thinking and judge yourself according to the amount of faith God has given you. We have many parts in one body, and all these parts have different functions. In the same way, though we are many, we are one body in union with Christ, and we are all joined to each other as different parts of one body. So we are to use our different gifts in accordance with the grace God has given us. If your gift is to speak God's message, do it according to the faith we have. If it is to serve, we should serve. If it is to teach, we should teach. If it is to encourage others, we should do so. Whoever shares with others should do it generously. Whoever has authority should work hard. Whoever shows kindness to others do it cheerfully. And in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14, we read, Do not neglect the spiritual gift that is in you, which was given to you when the prophets spoke and the elders laid their hands on you. Twenty-three years ago, a conflict did arise in my personal life. Do I continue in physical therapy or enter the preaching ministry full-time? Once again, Cindy came to my rescue when she pointed out that what I do every day is ministry. Whether it is with my hands or my words or my ears, 
It is ministry. That is when I got it. I knew that patients seemed better after that initial evaluation before treatment was ever rendered. There it was, and I had not even recognized it. What we do is ministry. Please listen to Jay Ashley, a physical therapist in Lafayette, Louisiana, and what he has to say about physical therapy. I've always had a passion to see people at their best, so physical therapy was a natural choice for me. There really isn't a magic pill for what we do. There isn't a medicine that makes your muscles stronger. Patients don't always see the light, so sometimes you have to be that light. The last thing they want to do is smile or, or move, so usually in the beginning it's less hands and more heart. But once you can get them to see the light, then you can start pushing and pulling. My name is Jay Ashley, and my choice is Lafayette General. Isn't that a great video? <clears throat> what we do is special. How about the therapist that walked Patrick Graham down the hall to ring the bell for the first time after his transplant surgery? Or the therapist who walked Beth Ward, our former LPTA president, to the end of her block for the first time. I can gladly report to you that Beth is now cancer free. Amen? <laughs> or how about that young, overweight young man who returns to Mike Eisenhart to thank him for the preventative care he received and is now riding bike races, has lost over 100 pounds, and is free from the symptoms of diabetes? Or how about that young therapist who returns to Connie Hauser to give thanks for guiding her as a student, and she is now successful in practice. This happens, ladies and gentlemen, because what we do is ministry. I can tell you that I was touched at the past House of Delegates when I was shown a Twitter post that included a picture of me standing with three students, and Kayla Ketchison, Ketchison tweets, famous Papa Qualls on Seersucker Tuesday. Incredible leadership at the APTA House of Delegates. Thanks, Papa. I had met this young lady three days before, and for her to feel comfortable enough to refer to me as Papa is an honor, I can tell you. You cannot teach this kind of compassion and sensitivity. We know how to make people feel better. We know how to make people happy. It is a gift. It is ministry. A while back, Boudreaux was sitting on his front porch one day, and he lived on a main highway <clears throat> in Louisiana, and he was watching a state highway crew, <clears throat> and he knew the guys that were working. Fontenot would dig a hole, and Hebert would cover it up. And Fontenot would dig a hole, and Hebert would cover it up. Well, they broke for lunch, and they came over to Boudreaux's house and sat down on the porch to have their lunch. And Boudreaux said, Man, I got to ask y'all a question. He said, man, I don't understand what's going on with y'all all day. He said, man, Fontenot, you dig the hole. He said, man, everybody, you cover it up. He said, what's the deal here? Fontenot said, man, Boudreaux, that's easy. He said, man, usually on the crew. He said, Fontenot, dig the hole. He said, Thibodeau put in the tree, and Hebert cover it up. But he said, Thibodeau off today. I think Boudreaux's confusion could very easily relate to the healthcare industry today. <laughs> Don't you feel that same frustration when those dozens of fact pages come from a line network every day? What did they do with the ones I returned yesterday? Is their Thibodeau not at work today? Even Boudreaux and Thibodeau see that things need to change. As a physical therapist, we have been required to provide evidence to justify what we do more than any other health care provider. But now all those years of data collection are about to pay off. Hopefully this data with the help of the registry will allow us to participate in value-based purchasing. Right now I'm not excited about reimbursement levels at all, at levels at all, but I am overjoyed because we have finally found, but more importantly, importantly recognized our place in the healthcare craziness. We are about to add some clarity to our confusion. Two or three years ago, I was mully grubbing one evening with Sharon Dunn, mully grubbing. That could be like complaining or bitching or whatever else. <laughs> but the fact that we were losing everything, we were giving everything away, 
Everyone else was doing what we do, not better, but cheaper. And what are we going to do? We had too many practice settings with no common goal or mission. Well, my friends, I can truly say that that is not the same feeling I have today. That practice diversity is now going to be our strength as we move forward. We have found our identity as movement specialists. Our worthiness is high across all treatment settings. Whether you practice in critical care, the emergency room, acute care, rehabilitation, home health, outpatient, or wellness and disease prevention, physical therapy is the answer in the most beneficial and cost-effective care. Movement is the healer. Other providers, payers, clients, and patients will be seeking our services more and more in the future. During a time when other healthcare providers are looking for fewer hours to practice, physical therapists, especially those in private practice, are extending their hours to meet people where they need to be met. And why? Because what we do is ministry, and that's what ministers do. With the increased demand on the nurse practitioner and physician's assistant to see more patients, they will be seeking our knowledge and expertise to help with their new challenge. They cannot do it, and many don't even know how to do it. And really, many don't even want to do it. They need us, and guess what? We need to do it right, because these other health care providers will ask for our guidance, not only with the care they provide, but help with their new practice model. We've been there. Once again, our practice diversity that was a burden for many years is about to be the model that other professions will look at to guide them. Other healthcare professionals who used to stand alone in private practice are now becoming more diverse. This new ownership employee-employer model will change their practice patterns and requirements, and many may not like what they see. However, just as with any ministry, we will always have challenges good is attacked. Reimbursement negotiation and legislative advocacy continue to be big and foremost for everyone. Just read everybody's campaign statement. We must pursue physical therapist participation in merit-based incentive payment systems and new alternative payment models. Medicare patient direct access along with unrestricted patient access across all states will be necessary as we prepare for consumer-driven health care. Continued input on the redesign of diagnosis codes and bundle payment must continue along with the push for locum tenens across all regions. Legislative work on student debt will continue, but accountability and ownership from the educational institutions, the financial institutions, and the students need to be included. All these activities will benefit those who we serve. So the reimbursement challenge today for physical therapy continues just as it did 60 years ago. Now it seems our 21st century James McClellan is Helene Ferron. Helene, do you really have any idea how many people have referred to you in their DICUS address? It's a bunch, I can tell you. With our movement specialist recognition, we have a unified message for public relations, and this should make Jay Goodfarb happier than ever. PR has always been his message. And I also hope that direct access will be, with, that with direct access, we will become more independent in our contract thinking as Peter Town encouraged years ago. Be independent no, ma no matter what your practice setting. Remember our practice is a career, not a job. Fortunately for us, it goes one step farther. It is a career, but more important, it is ministry. I'm going to start closing, but I want to show you a little video clip from a movie. However, I want to set it up a little bit first. It's a clip from the movie Antoine Fisher. I hope many of you have seen that movie. If not, I hope you do after you see this. Antoine Fisher was born while his mother was in prison. It's a true story. He was raised in foster care. He was abused in foster care went through his teenage years just troubled. Finally, he made it to the Navy. However, all during his time as an adolescent, he had a dream. And his dream was that someday, somebody was going to invite him in to a huge family table 
covered with food, and surrounded by family. It was a dream that he had had for years and years. He finally enlisted in the Navy, but he was so bitter and so angry that he stayed in trouble all the time until he hooked up with a psychiatrist who led him on a pathway. And one of the things that he did was he forced him to go back and find his family. He did. He found a friend. He did go confront the foster care mother and the daughter that had abused him. And then he just began cold calling people in the phone until one night, late at night, an aunt answered the phone. And they got together. They talked for just a little bit and they asked about his mother because they really figured out who exactly he was. His mother was still living, had never met her. They asked if he wanted to see her. They said yes. So the uncle took him to see his mother. They had conversation. The mother really never said anything. They had conversation. Antoine told her how, how well he was doing, how successful he had been, to show she would know. And then they left. And then the video clip starts at this particular point. When he goes back to his aunt and uncle's home. All right. Come on, One of the main things I forgot to tell you was that in his dream, he always saw that stack of pancakes sitting at his place. So you might ask, what does this video clip have to do with PPS? 
two things, I think. Dreams can become reality. Antoine Fisher's did, and so did Bob Dykus. Many of you have experienced the reality of a dream also. Maybe that is why you are here today. There is power in prayer, and maybe a dream is that mental picture of the prayer that many times we seek. There is also power in family. Antoine Fisher was excited when he found his family. I believe PPS is an extended family and we are happy when we are here together. Family is where sharing begins. PPS is a place that for 60 years, members and even non-members have felt at home and have come to share, ask questions, or just listen to ideas about the business of physical therapy and not get chastised for it. That is what families do. As I close today, I see Bob Dykus, James McKillop, and Charles Magistro sitting at that table in place of Antoine's grandmother. These founders have saved a place for us at the table because we are a part of the PPS family. We have never been more prepared, focused, directed, or united around a single message than we are today. What we choose to do with the gifts that have been passed on to us is now in our hands and is our responsibility. Let's not disappoint those who have worked so hard for so long, but probably more important are those that will drive the history of this section for the next 60 years of this ministry we call physical therapy. Thank you.